How do you determine customer satisfaction? Is there actually an official formula that describes all the ingredients that go with it? And guess what? There is. There are two things you need to consider. Number one is the customer expectations. What is it you expect when you look at something? Number two is the customer perception. What is it you get after your expectations? And if those two topics are in line with each other, like let's say they are equal to each other, they have to be equal, then you are satisfied. So when I started looking at the P11 Pro, the Lenovo P11 Pro with a keyboard on the pen, all the package together, I really, I felt like this could be a good competitor, right? For the Tab S7 or even the Tab S7 Plus. And that, my friends, is basically my customer expectation. So here's what I did. I actually got the P11 Pro, I bought it with the pen and the keyboard, and I kind of set it up. And I also sporadically compared it to the Tab S7, Tab S7 Plus. What I didn't realize is how good the Tab S7 actually is and I do know I know and sometimes you just need to be reminded so did I. What you guys will see coming up now is my real life experience setting up the P11 Pro. Have you ever heard of the term FFMB? I think, yes, FFMB mode. No? Well, then welcome to the club because I haven't. But that was the first thing that popped up on my screen when I turned on the P11 Pro. It basically means factory boot mode, but I didn't expect that. I expected a nice Lenovo welcome and say, hello Jens, you look beautiful today. You are awesome. You are my new customer but that wasn't the case bearing in mind we are just a few minutes in after unpacking and i want to go up one step back before i tell you how i resolved this here i actually had to go on google to find out how to get rid of this ffbm mode or whatever that bs mode is but when you actually get it out of the package and you unpack all of it it actually looks really nice and you look at it it's like hmm, i can see this happening that that looks cool in order to get rid of this mode you basically have to do either hard reset or a soft reset and i don't even know if it qualifies as a reset because factories I didn't even get to set it up anyway I did a reset I got rid of it and started my setup and then you have the keyboard and the pen and it all looks really nice all laid out and as I said build quality looks really cool I put the cover on I put the keyboard itself on and I put it down and I can see it wobbles and I thought okay I'll just adjust it a bit so I adjusted a bit and it still wobbles so unless you are going like this and you look down like that it wobbles so it wobbles all the time and i'm not a happy camper about that but let's park this for now and then i saw the pen right i got really excited i know it's very childish it's really good build quality you have to charge it though it's different but then i kind of thought where do i put it around the Lenovo P11 Pro but you have three options so you do have options and number one option is you put it on the back of the tablet in the case in some sort of adhesive strip but then you can't put the cover on so I don't think that works for me so I thought okay maybe I can put it on the cover that works as well you put an adhesive on there but then it's like a sore thumb sticking out and as soon as you put it in the bag I can see this coming off so and then you have like when you take off a sticker that didn't work either for me so you do have the case and the pen and option number three is really to have it as a separate kind of thing next to your tablet so you have the pen in a case in your bag as well as a tablet in a keyboard cover and i guess that is the option i would go for so we keep parking all these things i experienced but i want to get on to when i set it up there was some quirks and things i noticed like uh, some crashes for example google drive crashed a few times and also one note was get stuck and fortnite got stuck but i had to reset the application so restart the applications and it worked well then afterwards but there were some quirks i also noticed when it came to the battery and that was an interesting one so i noticed the battery was showing 51 percent but only two hours and 15 minutes to go and you can see this here it says 11:44, and it told me it will last until 2 p.m so what is the sensible thing to do then well i come back at 2 p.m right so you can see this here and apologies we had a power cut here and you can see i came back at 2 p.m the very same day and it adjusted itself slightly but it wasn't there yet it told me it's running out at 8 p.m tonight and that wasn't no not what i expected so what else can you do you leave it right i left it until the next day 
didn't touch it, nothing was running in the background, I wanted to see it come back at 2 p.m. the next day to see what the battery capacity is then. So here we go, 2 p.m. next day, it looks like it adjusted itself to what it really should be like. And then I also did an update and it's one of the quirks. When you look at the update itself, there's actually not much there. It's like a huge link, a huge number that you can't do anything with it. It doesn't tell you what the update is all about or what it includes. So it's kind of, you are updating something and you don't know what's happening. And I don't know, I don't fully embrace that. So guys, now we're gonna go in even deeper. So the P11 Pro display is an OLED display and is pointed out by so many reviewers. Apparently it is a pentile display. It is what it is, right? You can see here though, it supports 60 Hertz, which is obviously different to the Tab S7 line with 120 Hertz. However, when I checked Fortnite, the P11 Pro only offered 30 FPS versus the 90 FPS you will find on the Tab S7. And here, I would almost argue the Tab S7 display has more contrast. Although there is one thing I really noticed when I opened up Excel, it almost looked like the P11 Pro has a green tint issue. And this may well be due to the display technology. On the left, the P11 Pro, and it looks greenish. It looks really greenish in real life, especially when I opened up Excel. It, it was really weird. So I got a Type 7 Plus out to see if it's just maybe some OLED differences I didn't realize before. And um, no, the Type 7 Plus looked very similar to the Type 7, and this really surprised me. When it comes to taking notes, I think it is great that many companies now offer a package that includes a pen. Writing on it, on the P11 Pro is okay. -ish. You can tell it has some luck and you can also see and hear that it's kind of writing on a hard glass that iPad Pro experience. And this is very different for the Tab S7, as many of you guys already know. And to me, there is currently no better tablet out there for taking notes. It simply is a pleasure. I do want to touch quickly on the keyboard, on the keyboard cover, because as I said in the beginning, at first glance, it is a really nice offering in terms of what the P11 Pro looks like and the build quality of all the accessories included. However, the keyboard is again is okay, but the trackpad is unusable to me. It feels really like jumping jack. You will spend more time controlling the cursor than just touching the screen and get stuff done. I personally, I wouldn't use it. Again, it does show the quality of the Tab S7, including the offered keyboard. It also showed that we are really used to some pretty high standards, I must say. And we need to be reminded that what we have already is actually really Good. Hola, this is the P11 Pro, the selfie camera for video calls. This is the kickstand put in the possible, best possible position so it doesn't wobble, so it goes back. You have to be careful with your double chin. But what is the sound quality like? Picture quality are moving so you can see the adjustment of the light. Let me know in the comments below. Hola, now it's the Tab S7 and you can see the kickstand is a bit better adjusted here and you don't have this double chin issue. Well, I, it's my issue really. But what is the picture and sound quality like? I do like the look better of it, but I have to see the results. But let me know in the comments below. I want to touch very briefly on the battery life because when we do our Netflix review, Netflix streaming, that is a bit unfair to either device or any device really because we have different refresh rates, different brightness, nits levels. So I did full surfing, normal working days, and they are very similar. I do believe that the Lenovo P11 Pro has a slight advantage by maybe an hour per day, but you're talking about between 14 and 15 hours a day for normal working environment for both tablets. So look, the best way to explain the Lenovo P11 Pro is when a company tries to put a lot of good components into one package, like here, but really don't succeed. And they're kind of stuck between good and so-so, la la. Which then really depends on how you guys as a consumer see this. And that goes back to the customer expectation and customer perception, right? Is this for you? Is this good or semi-good? Or is it semi-bad or so-so, la la? And that's basically what 
what you guys need to decide. Either way, it's not blowing me away unless maybe it's half price. I can see this happening maybe for half price. But what I realize is that the Tab S7 and the Tab S7 Plus, they have no competition as of today. And the only, but listen to this, the only competition it can have will come from within Samsung. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think to the P11 Pro Assist? One you would go for? Thank you for watching. Peace out. Thank you.